All right, guys. Well, I've had this thing since uh, the end of 2017 with the damaged bumper on it, and I'm finally getting around to fixing it. The only reason it took me so long because I didn't know whether I was going to actually get a bumper or whether I was going to go a roll pan. Well, if you've seen the title, you know what I decided. And if you also know by the title, yes, that is a GM part, and it is actually an OEM GM roll pan. You can actually go into your dealer right now and order one. They're still available. Uh, that's actually where I got that. I got it through where I work. Some stuff that you will need when you get this, this does not take the S10 lights uh, for your license plate. They take the 88 to 98 Chevy truck license plate uh, lights. The trucks that look like my Yukon. Now, these aren't GM. Um, this is actually something that I got for about 25 bucks uh, off of eBay. Um, these are black housings, not the chrome housings that would usually come on the uh, 88 to 98 trucks. But uh, I will be showing the part numbers how to, of all these things that are GM. Uh, when I actually get everything painted, I will be replacing these with GM ones because uh, these I don't like the quality of these too much. But for temporary, they'll at least let me be legal uh, while I fit the rest of the body kit. <clears throat> but I also got new clips too because my other ones were kind of rusted. And this kit comes with these, which you actually will need these plastic pucks for this bumper. You will also need little rubber feet that actually go into the bottom of the bumper where the license plate goes on the bottom because uh, you only bolt in two top bolts. Also, this is... I mean, it's pretty much a bolt-in. You could bolt it in or weld it in, do whatever you want to do. But there's holes pre-drilled in this, and there's also holes pre-drilled down here. Right there, and there's about three or four more down. And then on the bed side, there's another one. Now, if you want to just screw it in, like I'm screwing in the, uh, the arches for the uh, body kit, it takes a number 10 screw. Uh, I use stainless for the for the side, but I want this to be more permanent. Uh, the side ones are act actually have 3M tape that hold on the flare, so you just get screws to kind of hold it in. But then there's 3M tape to hold it the rest of the way. This doesn't gonna isn't gonna have any of that because I'm not gonna weld it and I'm not gonna bondo it because I see way too many roll pans where somebody welds it and bondos it, and there's a crack right down the body line, and it annoys the heck out of me. For something for me personally, because I have a bunch of bodywork issues on the Yukon from shoddy bodywork from before I got the truck. Same thing with this one. There's some. Sh the bodywork looks fine, but the paint. They took shortcuts. They didn't take the emblem off. They didn't take the side window out. And when they painted it, they just taped it up. And the paint is starting to chip away around the SLS emblem and around my rear window on this side. And it annoys the heck out of me. But that's a rant for another day. So, to mount it more permanently, I have uh, well nuts, uh, quarter 20, zinc coated, and then some stainless steel screws. So, for the factory part numbers, for pigtails, clips, uh, the little rubber feet, and for these, is here. The top one that says filler plate, that is the roll pan. The lamp socket is those black sockets that you actually see on the outside. Or no, that's the socket that actually goes from the back side where the bulb goes. The rear license plate lamp, that should be the uh, outside cover plate uh, that's black in this case. Those are the clips for the back side. And then the bottom one, the license plate black bracket, is actually the little rubber bumper. So uh, that's all the GM part numbers to get this GM, these GM, and get just these little pigtails, GM. Plus the little rubber bumpers, which I have ordered. I still don't have them yet. They're coming from uh, good old maple country, Canada, and they haven't got here yet. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and show you what it looks like. And here it is. This is where these go. And obviously there's a clip on the back side. 
that's where your spare tire thing goes that's where those little plastic clips goes and these little pieces right here are where those little rubber bumpers go now <clears throat> like i said i ordered this through work and uh with the whole economy thing that's going on right now um it's kind of toning down now and kind of opening it back up but i ordered this weeks ago um it took about three to four weeks to get in due to everything that's going on and uh there is one little tiny mark on the box where i don't know if this was if something was set on top of it or it was upside down or what or it just kind of leaned over against something but there is one tiny well the camera is making it a lot worse one tiny mark right here now i could get them to order another one uh, that wouldn't be a big deal but after waiting for as long as i waited for this I decided to go ahead and keep it because that little mark right there is very, very, very easily fixed. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, there's a hole there. That's like a drain hole. There's a hole there. There's all these holes across the top. And there's also this hole down here. And uh, these all bolt into pre-drilled holes in the body. Yeah, let's... Uh, take the bumper off now which is honestly pretty easy there is three bolts on each side there there and there all on both sides Just go ahead and take those off and you can pull the bumper straight out but make sure to take your license plate screws out just a quarter turn and pull them out and then you can you have to take this little clip off because that's on the bracket but other than that yeah just go ahead and pull these out Pull that clip out and take the six bolts off, three on each side, and you can pull your bumper straight off. All right, well, the bumper's almost off. I still got to take the brackets off, but uh, I said this earlier in the video. I don't know if I left it in, if I'm going to leave it in or not, but uh, I talked about crappy bodywork and went on a rant. This is why it pisses me off. Obviously something happened to the bedside, so they had to paint the bedside. There's a bunch of crap down here. You can see the new paint, and then clearly where it's been chipping off all the way down, there's the factory paint underneath. Well, look right here. They left the stupid bumper on the truck when they painted the freaking bedside. And none of the and this is all freaking overspray and who knows what else right there because they were lazy didn't take the bed so didn't take the freaking bumper off they didn't take crap off up there so I got paint I got some paint slowly chipping away they didn't take the bumper off so that's all that's that's all gonna have to be repainted this is fine I can really clean that really good and uh, get that back I also noticed that they must have replaced the tailgate because they didn't even fully cover the paint job right here. Either they replaced or repaired the tailgate because there's two different colors right here. I would love to know what body shop repaired this thing and give them a piece of my mind and make them, and make them fix it because uh, anyway... Rant number two over. I'm going to take these body mounts off. All right, got the brackets off. Now I got to remove this useless ID bar that I paid two. Well, I didn't pay much for it, but I paid more than a standard one that is crap because it stopped working. So uh, now I'm just going to go and remove the wiring, which is fairly easy. All it is is a four pin connector, but also the reverse wire. So I'll actually tape the reverse wire up because I plan to actually put some reverse lights somewhere. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove this and I will start fitting up the bumper. Alright, got the mounts, the bolts, and the crappy no, no longer working light bar. And I went ahead and took off the T-tap that I used and put everything back to the way it was factory. So now time to put those other pigtails on now this isn't like the the, the full-size trucks and it doesn't have a connector 
that connects to the bumper. This is a wiring harness that goes up to the main wiring harness that goes over there to that wiring harness that goes. So yeah, you can't just, you know, tap these, tap those new things in. You have to actually cut it and then put the new pigtail end on, which is fine with me because I don't plan on going to anything else but the roll pan. Um, and the, those screw holes that I was showing you earlier, the here or the other two at the bottom of the bed, there's one right there and then one on the other side. Take either the pigtails that you have, or in my case, I bought the hardest because it came with those lights. Uh, it's not going to matter what color you put where. Uh, these 194 bulbs fit in either way. So, and if it's an incandescent bulb, it doesn't matter. If it's an LED bulb, if it doesn't work, just flip it over. So, I'm not going to worry with color to color unless there's actually a green and a white in the harness, then I'll put it on green. All right, I got the color mat sprayed over those old holes that were mounting the ID bar. Shouldn't matter because those should be covered up. Even if they're not, this whole truck is going to get re repainted at some point, but I hate all of these imperfections with just crappy bodywork. Anyway, I got the sides peeled off and there is a blue or this one's either it's like bluish black and then a brown with a white stripe and then this one's black with a brown and a white stripe. So neither color matches up so I'm just gonna I don't know. It's just gonna go either way. It doesn't matter. Like I said the 194 bulbs can go in either way, so it shouldn't matter. So, uh, yeah, all I'm going to do is cut back here and then put this on there to where it's pretty much still covered in the sheathing. Anything that's not, I got all that extra. You don't need to see me do any wires. I'm just going to use heat shrink butt connectors. So, yeah, I'll be back after I do the wiring. All right, got them in. Got them all butt connected then. uh taped back up at the loom. Um, one of my LEDs started going on the fritz. Uh, this one works. This one doesn't always work. Uh, and I switched them around. That bulb kind of works in that one, but it's kind of intermittent. That bulb works in that socket. So uh, I'll just, uh, I guess I have to, I think I have some more white one late LEDs lying around somewhere. But anyway, I just test fitted the uh, roll pan and the roll pan mounts on top of these pieces right here, it actually, that little wing at the bottom goes above this lip right here. The wing sits on that lip. And then all these bolt holes line up, like I was saying, there's that one there. Come over here, there's one there. Come over here, there's two of them. It goes on the driver's side one, this one, not this one. And then go over here, there's another one, go over there, and there's another one. All of those I'm gonna drill out and put a rib nut in. I think I'm going to uh, take the bumper and actually put the rib nut in the bumper for these down here. Bigger. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and drill these out, which in turn means moving the, uh, removing the tailgate. I'm going to drill those out so I can put the rib nuts in it. And to, do, to remove the tailgate, you have to take this, pull the tailgate up, shift it forward. And then to take it out, there's actually a cutout on this side. A little cutout on the back so once you get both of these off you actually put it at an angle and it lifts up at an angle and then you pull it out on that side all right i got all the rib nuts in uh the only ones that i haven't done yet are the ones for this and again i i want to line everything up first get everything where i need it because <clears throat> i'm I, these two bottom holes are going to dictate how this thing sits so I want to make sure those holes do line up, and if they do, I, I'm still going to have to massage it a little bit to get it where I want it. Uh, I'm going to have to like move the hole over or something, because that hole is way over on the edge on that one. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and mount it up, bolt it in, and then uh, mess with the bottom holes. Alright, I think I already said it, but I got the rib nuts in here. I also barely widened out these holes. These holes were almost big enough for the rib nuts. Put the rib nuts on both of these, on both sides at the bottom. And then I drilled out these to fit the quarter inch bolt. I really honestly should have used, I think I have some like M6 and M8. Uh, that's what I should have mounted this with, M M6 and M8 with big washers. But uh, quarter 20 will work. It's just a little bit on the thin side when you start getting over here to the edge on both of them. 
But anyway, um, got those drilled out for the quarter 20 bolts. So they should be able to go up. Got them painted. Keep from rusting. So now I'm probably going to go ahead and show you how to put the, the light brackets on. Um, the way you do that, just take the lights. There's two little fins. There's a cutout. Put it in the cutout. And then on the back side, probably can't do this with one hand. You take these and you slip them underneath. There's two wings on it. There's a wing there and a wing down there. You just take it and you push it up in between that until it clicks in. And that's it. I'll go ahead and click them in and then I'll show you because it's hard to do one hand. And there's one of them. And you can actually look at the side of this. See how there's that V-notch right there? These clips also have that V-notch. So, just that. And there you go. There's the lights. Now, everything else you can install after it's on. These uh, plastic uh, license plate nuts, little square nuts. You can push those in after the, after it's in. And uh, I don't have them yet, but those little rubber bumpers. They're just little rubber pieces that push through and uh, keep the bumper from vibrating because there's only one set of uh, mounts. Now, you could always drill other holes and put another mount in, but uh, it's not really necessary. So, I'm going to get this on, get it all bolted up, and I'll show you what it looks like. And there it is. They're all in. I gotta find my uh, piece that goes right there. I put it somewhere. Uh, I don't know where I put it. Put it somewhere where I wouldn't forget it. Or I wouldn't, you know, throw it away. I don't know where it is. Maybe I'll pull one from the junkyard. If I go tomorrow, I planned on going today, but I had to go into work. And then down here. Now. All I do is plug in my lights and put those little plastic pieces in. And if I had them, put those little rubber bumpers there. Put my plate on. And it's mounted. It just needs to be painted. I got to tweak those little bottom tabs where those bolts uh, bolts go in. I got to tweak them out. This side, I think, for well, that side, I think, is fairly good. Anyway, I could take those tabs and tweak them out just a little bit. It would be perfect. And there we go. They're in. They're lit up. So, just these plastic pieces should be the standard size. There they are. These are these are more of the hard plastic. I kind of like the softer plastic. There we go. The only thing that's left is, well, put my plate on, but again, those little rubber bumpers at the bottom. It's the only other thing. The plate's going to try to vibrate and chatter on this, but I'm not worried about it because it's not, you know, actually painted yet. So, uh... Hopefully those things come in this week. Uh, like I said, they came from uh, Canada. And uh, uh, the last time I checked, they were in customs. And with everything going on, who knows when they're going to pass customs. So, um, yeah. The only thing I have left to put the plate on, but uh, you don't have to see that. But, uh, yeah. Here we go. Either way, that looks so much better. Other than the fact it's not painted. than that I might as well I'm gonna go ahead and put the tailgate on let you see it with everything on but uh, yeah and there it goes it's all in and it's mounted so all that's left is to, uh, get those little rubber bumpers that will keep it off the paint and uh, finish fitting my body kit my flares are already uh, fitted I need to refit them because I'm, I'm there might be part I have to shave uh, where it goes in this body line right here uh, I think it's just it's this side or maybe it's the front uh, 
it, I don't think it quite hugs to the body like I want it to. I got two sets of flares, so I can pick and pick and choose which ones I want. Uh, I got one set that's all new, uh, new old stock, and then I got another set that's actually used that I got with a, a full kit that I bought. Because uh, I found a full kit after I pieced together a bunch of pieces. Uh, but I still didn't have everything. Because I was missing some brackets and that kit came with all the brackets so I went ahead and ordered that. And it's good to have spare parts for the body kits because they're getting harder and harder to find. But yeah, I don't know where I left off. But uh, yeah. That's uh, how to, well, one way to install the roll pan. Uh, which is just bolt on uh, another way you could you don't have to enlarge the holes and just use uh, like I said number 10 uh, Self-tapping screws uh, I have some number 10 screws that are stainless that like I said that I'm using to put the flares on uh, To put them on the bottom and then on the top. There's a piece of uh, 3m tape that goes all the way around the arch and it glues to the uh, uh, to the arch of the, of the fender that's already there or bedside that's already there um but yeah th that's two ways or the other way is screw it on and then go back and you know uh fill it with bondo and stuff but this one with as much of a gap is right here this one is not designed for uh the gm one is not designed for uh you know bondo and flow in um, the, the other, uh, ones that I've seen actually, you know, kind of go all the way to the edge and you have to kind of, you know, shave them and trim them to get them to actually fit between the bed rails. And then you, you tack weld them and stuff like that. But with the gap that's there, you know, the eighth inch, eighth inch or quarter inch gap that's there, uh, you would have to deeply tack it and then use a lot of Bondo. So this is mainly a bolt in, but you could weld it if you wanted to. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the next video or the video after this, but I did get new rims. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll talk to y'all later.